Hey, good morning, friends. So it's Brian here. We're going to talk about HVAC. Actually, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to work on it. So today's project is to run the power cable from the panel on the other side of the house to the disconnect at the outdoor unit and to get the outdoor unit physically wired. I might work on this today. I don't know. Um, the biggest challenge is this opening size is different from the opening that was on the other unit. So that's gonna require some duct work. <sighs> Not really in the mood for the duct work, but whatever. Um, so at any rate, this is, I think, the 11th installment of installing the HVAC unit. It's an ACIQ unit, which is a private label Medea unit. It's a traditional air handler with a mini split style condenser on the outside. And I'm installing it myself because A, I want it done right. And B, nobody's making 3,500 bucks for installing a unit today or any other day. Anyway, let's get going. So to get ready for a wire pull, I need to open up my elbows. That's what these are called. These are called pulling elbows. And we set that there. Hopefully I won't lose the gasket. And then I prefer to put the screws back in. It makes them easier to find. Sorry, it's a bad angle for you guys, but it is what it is. So next I gotta do the one that's up there. Okay, so I'm also gonna seal around these uh, wall penetrations and I'm using ISO quad. You want to be generous with this and then smooth it with a gloved finger. That's the simplest way to deal with it. And then just pull it off and you're done. All right, so I'm gonna seal these. And this material does not store so you need to, once you open the tube, you need to use it. Let's see if got anything else up here that needs to be sealed. I don't see anything. Put a little bit more on there because I really, once I'm done, I can't use the tube for anything else. So let's go ahead and start cleaning it up.
and we're not looking for pretty because we are going to paint this. We're just trying to make sure we're stopping any water from getting in through the wall. That second one is real hard to work on because I'm really not close enough to it to be doing what I'm doing, but I'll make the best of it. Be right back. All right. So we're gonna get back to taking these apart. Unfortunately, part of that gasket got caught in there. It's not really a big deal. These are gonna be a pain in the ass to pull through anyway, so whatever. Probably should have taken them out before I glued them, but it is what it is. Just gotta carefully pick it out, make the best of it. All right, so we got the ugly ladder on the outside. Um, it's a lot less likely to be stolen, although it's Houston. Police don't do much unless it's a major, like a murder. Um, but anyway, so hopefully that ladder will not get stolen while I'm working on this. So regarding my last comment, yeah, I'm a little bit better in. I do live in an okay neighborhood, but you know, people, stray children, steal shit all the time. And there's a never ending market for scrap metal. So whatever. So we're gonna fish this to the other side of the house. Maybe. Maybe not. Might have to go from the other side and pull a piece of string through, which I don't know if I have a piece of string or rope. So first, let's just 
see if we can bend that. You guys can't see it. So what I did is I bend it up a little bit because I'm sure it's the hook that's catching. So that's the second pipe joint. There's the third. So by bouncing it, I can generally get it through. go so we should have at least one or two more this is the 45 degree bend Pulled it back too far. Almost. It doesn't look like it's extraneous work, but it actually is. And I have no idea what I'm, why it go through sometimes and not others, other than we're probably six feet from the end of the ball. and I have to pull it out and look at it because I probably bent the tip. I don't know if I bent the tip or not. Let me go see if I can find something small to stick on the end of this.
So I couldn't find anything round, but I did find a bottle cap and I'm gonna tape, I drilled a hole in it and I'm gonna tape this and I'm hoping that'll form with enough tape, it'll form a uh, sort of a cone that I can use to guide this through. So I also want this to be as straight as possible. And I know this looks crazy, but just trust me when I say it, it'll probably work. Now this might be too big, in which case, yeah, no, nope. it is too big. So let me get a knife to get rid of it. Nice idea, bad execution. So you can see what I made and it's unfortunately too large. And in case you're wondering how you undo this, well, it's just as simple as how it got done. Just patiently pull all the tape off. Or impatiently pull it off, whichever one's your style. If you watch my channel long enough, you know patience is not really my forte, so yeah, I'm gonna just rip it off. There we go. So, take most of those bends out. I think it needs to kind of look like that. So we'll try it again. Well, look, it's the Popo chapter, Chopper. Not it. All right. Let's see if this works any better. One of the irritations about metal fish tape is it catches very easily on anything in the immediate area. Well, so far, uh, uh, I spoke too soon. Not catching on much, that's a good sign. and I'm still stuck in the same place. So, at this point, the only thing I can do is go from the other side. So, let's go do it. And because we're gonna take the fish tape all the way around, we're gonna wind it up.
some stray tape there from a previous pull. All right, let's go to the other side. All right, so we're over here in the full sun where it's probably 90 degrees and feels like the surface of the sun. Oh, and I forgot, there's probably some foam and junk in here. definitely a direction to this. All right, I'm gonna go check it from the other side. I'll be right back. All right, the good news is we uh, are well out here, so I'm actually gonna push some of this back. And in order to um, make this go smoothly, I wanna to pull towards me but that's gonna require, I don't have any rope, so I'm gonna fish this tape back through. And to tie the two together, I'm gonna to use a piece of galvanized steel wire. not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm just going to make it quick and dirty and hope I don't get stuck. So my experience in wire pulling is that if you streamline this a little bit, you will have fewer problems. And I don't have time to get stuck in the pipe today, so we're gonna streamline it. And one of the things I'm gonna do is put a tail on it. And the purpose of the tail is to be able to undo this. So the tail will just kind of flap loose in here, but that's for me to grab it and pull it. Now, as this comes up, it's gonna catch, and then I'm gonna come and manually feed it through here, but I figured you guys would find this part interesting. And we'll see if my wireless microphone works from that far.
and it is. Yep, it's exactly stuck where I expected it to be. So we'll just ease it through that and then hopefully it'll pull through. So let's go to the other side and see. All right, I don't think there's anything exciting about this, but you guys won't be able to see it with where I've been putting the camera. So I'm gonna put the camera way back so you can see how I do this. I just walk it back. All right, there it is. Let me go check the damage on the other side. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all good. Now I'm gonna show you what that tail was for earlier. This is lets me easily grab the tape and untangle it. And now we gotta get this galvanized wire out of here. I'll be right back. So I'm gonna run a pair of number eights because I need 50 amps of ampacity. And if I'd run number six uh, Romex, it would not have supported that. So in this case, I'm running THHN, which is much easier to pull through conduit anyway, with a number 10 for ground, and that's per NEC. And first, what we got to do is make up our leader. And So we'll start there. This is just picture wire hanger that I'm using. Um, it'll be more than sufficient. And I'm just gonna insert it and wind it around itself and then leave the rest of this sticking out. And it sure feels like it's a 150 over here in this corner of the yard. So then we'll crimp that over like that and we'll wind it a little bit more so that if it pulls, it crimps against the wire. This is where I start to have issues with my hands. So a uh, little carpal tunnel that limits my ability to work efficiently.
All right. Be right back. All right, so I've got some Matrix shampoo here that I'm just gonna ease into the line, and that'll work as a wire lube for me. So I'm gonna go to the other side and pull it through. Okay, so it fell back a little bit on me. All right, now I'm gonna go pull it from the other side. So periodically, you're gonna feel a little snag. And when you do, you need to stop and figure out what it is and clear it. In this case, it's just a little twist in the wire. No big deal, we'll just untwist it. And go back to the other side and pull. So this should be 75 feet from breaker to device. And it's fighting with me, so I gotta go fix that on the other side because I don't have the power to pull through that. All right, here we go. And that's our next tangle. So we'll just spend the time going back and forth clearing tangles. Now, if it was gonna be a 50 amp circuit, I might actually be worried about it, but, because wire size relates to voltage drop. But in this particular case, the maximum is 42 amps or a minimum of And there's our next kink. All right, so let's see if we can
Well, that's a happy sight. No, we need to pull quite a bit more though. Let me go untangle it. So we're almost there. We can actually disconnect this, but I don't have the pliers for it. So I think another foot or so. So let me go get the pliers and free up whatever tangle just formed. All right, so just a little bit more and that should be enough. Let me cut this loose. And then I'm gonna cut those. And then I'm gonna see if I can just push it down. Cause I might be able to. I can, that's awesome. So this is where this gets really difficult because it's just not a lot of room to work. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm essentially where I need to be, is I'm just gonna cut this. Let me reposition the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. So it would be a mistake to try and feed all of these at once, but feeding them one at a time isn't going to be as big of a challenge. And THHN is stranded which makes it much easier to fish through conduit. All right, and that's more than enough to get into that box. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and I'm actually just gonna go pull from the other side and pull the slack out. So we're almost there. We've got a little bit of an issue with red. So let me see if I can straighten this out so it'll cleanly pull back into that elbow. All right, so I think we're done. We are, so let me put that cover plate back on.
So you can see that I've got the wire in here very cleanly. I'm gonna pull a little bit so that it's not tight. Because if I ever have to do anything to it, that's gonna be an issue. But past that, I'm done. Or at least done with this, this point in the system. There really isn't a nice way to do this. The whole goal is not to drop the screws or lose anything or kink anything. And that's easier said than done. All right, so we're done with that section. And we're also done with this elbow. So let's go ahead and close it up. And this one's got a little slack in it, so it's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and get the dirt out of here. And At one point, these used to be sticky back, but I guess that's no longer the case. So we're gonna make the best of it here. not 100% convinced that's on the right side. So let me loosen this and see. And it was not. And that's not perfect either, but it's a big improvement. So I think it'll work. So I gotta go get a different bit for this uh, box. All right, same thing applies. You wanna do this one at a time. And at this point, we just wanna bring them up in here. We'll secure them at a later point.
All right. So first things first, we're gonna ground it or bond it. So we'll open the screw or the terminal all the way up. And in this particular case, that's probably enough there. Now, it should go without saying that if you aren't comfortable with electricity or don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't work on it. I'm comfortable and I feel like I know what I'm doing when it comes to this. So I don't have a problem working on electricity. But if you do, or you're not sure what you're doing, Hire an electrician, somebody small, local. You call the big company with fancy trucks, you're paying for their trucks and their advertising. You should not have an excess amount of wire sticking out from the terminal. It's just bad workmanship. And you wanna get them nice and tight. Now, if I could have found it, I would have used aluminum wire for this because it's substantially cheaper than copper and it's just fine as long as it's a modern aluminum wire. So at this point, we're gonna dress the wires back in here, tuck the slack into here. So let's put that back together. Now, this one's a little challenging because we don't have all of it, but it'll be okay. We're gonna put that on the top where it'll do the most good. All right, so now we've got to do a little bit on the other side. Um, it would really be nice to pull the control cable, but I'm gonna mess with that later. So let's stop for the moment and work on the other side. All right, so first thing we need to do is trim this wire. So I think, yeah, I think that's plenty right there. And then let me clean up my mess. <clears throat> All right, similar to the other side, I'm just gonna feed these wires one by one. It's a little bit long to feed them one by one, but it should be okay.
All right. All right, at this point, we're done up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the door off this. And that's the old line for the air conditioning condenser. So we're going to go ahead and remove it. Let me see if I bought the, I don't think I bought the 45 amp. So let me go see if I did or not. Okay, I did not, so no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and cap these off. It's just a best practice. And then I'm gonna wrap them up and get them out of my way. If I ever need that 30 amp disconnect on the other side, it's there. And in the meanwhile, I'll go ahead and feed this through. Okay, so that's awesome. Now that's done. So now we need to bring this up and secure it. And let's just take a look here and see what we're dealing with. I don't know if these are bonded. It looks like all the ground is on the right side. Well, you know what? The ground is over here on the right side. And 
I'm gonna have to turn the power off to do what I need to do. So let me go do that. So all my ground wires are over here and I just, I don't wanna stick all my, I don't wanna stick my fingers in there without, or with the power on. This is much safer. And allows me to just not be as worried. And I can do things that I wouldn't do if I was under power. So this is a sub panel, so the ground is separated and the neutral is not bonded to the panel. in there. That looks good. These are going to have to come up into this neighborhood. So we'll go ahead and cut them here. They'll get trimmed again once I have a breaker to install in there. And that's really my next step is I need to go get a breaker. Okay, so I'm back from Home Depot. All they had was a 50 amp breaker. That will do the job. So I'm just gonna set it here. Actually, I'm gonna snap it in. I need a different size screwdriver. I'll be right back. Okay, enough of that. That's how I prefer to do this anyway.
right, so that's a nice install. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. So nice gentle bends in my wires. This could be and should be a little cleaner. I don't like GE breakers. So there we are. This is our new 50 amp breaker that serves the um, circuit for the condenser. And we're not gonna power it up because there's no need to. We'll mess with that after we've got the thing fully connected. Because we're done at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. Let me go get the, the driver. Okay, so one of the things I need to do is uh, put a reducer in here because this is a three quarter inch box and we're gonna use half inch conduit or flex to go to, for the control cable. There we go. not done so um, let me go get the next stuff okay so this is a fitting for uh, non-metallic liquid tight which is just a waterproof conduit So you just push the fitting all the way in there. And then when you tighten this, it cinches down on it. Now there's a little rubber O-ring here. And this just goes up in here like this. And then we'll secure it with a few taps from a screwdriver. So the washer has little keys on it and you just punch on the keys and that makes it nice and secure. Now over here, we're gonna take the cover off And I'll show you what we're working with here. So we've got our data side and our power side. And we're gonna bring in power right now. So we'll pop this out and we're gonna pop that out. There we go. So now we'll just figure out how long this needs to be to look right. So I think that's gonna get us where we wanna go. So we'll take a pair of tubing cutters and just slice right through it. That's the beauty of the non-metallic stuff. In addition to it, it never rusts. Now, a 90 isn't gonna fit here. It would fit this way, but that, that's not right. We need a drip loop. So we're gonna use another straight connector and we'll return the other one. And the process here is you just work this in. This inner tubing is flexible. And then you have to wiggle and twist and get it in there. Except that I forgot to put the tubing on, so now I have to take it apart. And that is harder than it looks. way harder than it looks. If 
I had another one, I would throw this away. It's that hard. So. <coughs> wow. There we go. Don't make that mistake again. It's good to know it has some grip. That looks good there. I gotta go get the half inch because that's what's gonna go to the other one. All right, same program, but we're gonna glue this in. And that saves us a fitting. If the box had been a half inch size, um, I could have glued the could have glued it in without any hassle. Um, glue is not normally as good of a bond. So I'm going to put glue on both ends so that I make sure I have a nice solid glue. and now it doesn't want to stay. So I might have to go get a half inch. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to uh, drill it in. Let me go get my drill. All right, so what we need to do at this point is determine our drill points. All right, so I thought this was done for, but it's not. I need a glove. All right, we're gonna try and glue this again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wedge it in here.
one more awful screw. Okay, let me clean up while that dries. Okay, so while that sets, I'm gonna fish wire, and this is not gonna be terribly difficult. I'm just gonna push the wire through. I'm actually gonna work, I think, from this end. Yeah, it's not gonna cooperate. I gotta go get my fish tape. So I'm gonna start on this side and push through. Now this is almost the same, except we're not gonna run a piece of wire in here with this because we only got seven or eight feet to go. Now, as before, I'm gonna put a little flag on the end of this so that I can pull it off once I fish it through. So you gotta, the approach angle's gotta be right. But let's go ahead and deal with this. So we're going to go ahead and trim this. Let's 
too much uh, wire in the box, but we're gonna pull that back here in a second. That's probably right, right there. No, a little more than that. So these are gonna go here. That's about right, so we'll trim these. And this is really just for convenience of me. So I'm gonna open the lugs up. That looks good there. So we're gonna put this back together. Okay, so we need to go there, so that's probably enough wire for that. And understand why this terminal is so far down in here. It makes it really difficult to connect and show you what I'm talking about. So if this terminal was up here, it would make this a lot easier to maneuver.
and these need to be about that length. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I think it'll make my life easier. And right I am. These are honestly the wrong terminals for this kind of connection for 50 amps. Okay, I don't understand this. I got their label wrong. These just don't look like they were gonna carry the current for 50 amps or 42, 41 amps, sorry. Whatever, it just doesn't look right. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten these by hand at this point. nothing so I'm, and these are all moving an eighth of an inch so that tells me they needed to be tightened so then that's going to come back in here all right I'm going to pick up my wires and then go get me a soda. Okay, so now we're going to run this half-inch conduit. Good, that seems solid. So I'm going to bring it over here and zip tie them because I don't, I don't want a bunch of loose conduit running around. So I think that's about right for here. We'll cut that about right there.
and we're not going to make the same mistake again. We'll put this on first because that was a real bear last time. I think that's it. All right, let me clean this up. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the manual talks about different wiring methods. This is using, communication A uses, um, or wiring method A uses communication from the indoor to the outdoor unit, and it uses the communicating thermostat that the unit comes with. Now, I talked to HVAC Depot, I left a message and the guy called me back and honestly didn't answer my question, but Connection method B, traditional thermostat, communication from indoor to outdoor. And then communication C is non, or method C is non-communicating. So if you, and this has all the various, you know, heat pump staging and cooling methods. And then if you read through this that's poorly translated English, it basically tells you, please use connection B. And then the rest of this is for UV, uh, high level water switch in your pan and humidistat, uh, or dehumidification control. So we'll mess with that later. And then it tells you what uh, these different um, terminals do. So we're going to follow this, and we're going to run S1 to S2, or S1 and S2 to S1 and S2. And we're going to use shielded control wire, because that's what it calls for. I don't know where it says that in here, but that's what these call for, so that's what we're going to install. So, let me get this positioned here. So I ran conduit when I had the fiasco with the uh, Goodman's communicating system dying. And... Ever since then, I realized exactly what communicating mode does. So, as much as it pains me, we're going to take apart the communicating, or we're gonna take the seven wire out of here. And no, it's not enough to have run it to where the thermostat now lives. And we're gonna cut it there. We'll recycle that. And then we've got this nice Belkin 18-2 shielded that we're going to bring up in its place. And to do that, we're going to overlap. And I got plenty of wire. I bought about 50 feet of it off eBay. Uh, actually, it might be 25. It's not even that long. I mean, it goes over there, down, out, down. But we're gonna get a nice, you know, joint here with the tape. And we'll cut this like we always do. And as with everything, I'm gonna put a little flag on here. 
so that I can undo it without a whole lot of hassle later. All right, and I've got some of this Matrix shampoo that we're gonna stuff in here. We'll just close that. Let me go give this a tug, I'll be right back. Well, actually, I'll let you guys watch. I gotta set up a ladder out there, so it'll take a second. Pretty standard stuff. Now that that's started, we'll go work outside. And I'm gonna stretch this out first. So, viewing angle's gonna suck, but just know all I'm doing is pulling wire. So that's not enough. That might be. Yeah, I think that's enough. Let me go get my cutters real quick. So first things first, let's cut this loose. This is more than enough. Uh, next, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is see if we can just push this through. It's a small, flexible wire. So maybe... No. 
Nope, nope, nope. I'm gonna get with the fish tape. I'll be right back. That's tight, but it's here. Let me get my uh, electrical tape. Okay, so this is the same program as before. We're gonna mate these two up and tape it together. That little trick there just makes it easier for me. And then you want to come forward first, create your little nose cone with lots of tape, and then work your way back. And this one seems particularly tight in a couple places. Uh, the inside is a little bit grabby, so I'm gonna go get the shampoo bottle again and uh, dump some goop in there. I'll be right back. I mean, who knew that shampoo from a hotel could be so useful, but it can. So this will be the third time it's been used as pulling lubricant. So I'm gonna back this up so you guys can see both sides of it. Because there's really nothing to it, especially on a run that's this short. Oh yeah, that lubricant's really gonna help here. <sighs> wow, that's a substantial difference. Now, in this case, I want a loop in here. There's a real specific reason. That way, if I ever have to do a splice, I've got the wire here already. So I'm just gonna tuck that loop in there. I've got more than enough on this end. So I'm gonna cut my wire off. It's gonna be in that neighborhood. All right. And then it's time to clean up. So. We'll undo this. And the shampoo will eventually dry, so it's not a big deal. That would have been a difficult pull without some kind of lubricant. And I guess I could have bought lubricant at Home Depot, but it's cheaper to use what I already have. Okay, so next I'm gonna put the cover back up on top. Because then I'm done with the high work. And you know, I ran this conduit after the fact, but it sure has made my life easier when I needed to just change this, because you saw it took me all of five minutes to pull different communication wire. And that's one of the things that I regret not doing from the get-go. I should have run conduit to a box with the intent to change this out every seven to 10 years, and that's something I would do differently. I would run conduit to my air conditioning units for power. And I would make sure the conduit is pullable, meaning that I have pull elbows in accessible locations for future uh, change outs. All right, let me get this ladder out of here.
Okay, so we're going to put a plate on this other box. And, you know, it's needed a plate since it was put in. And that's been two years. Shit. That's where that needs to go. That's good. So next what we need to do is strip this wire and there's not really a nice way to do it. biggest thing here is not to cut yourself. This is shielded wire, so there's less of a risk of cutting into the wire itself. Although that might be actually possible. Looks like it's foil shielded, not a big deal. All right, so we're gonna peel the shielding back. Now, in order for this to work properly, it needs to be grounded on both sides because it's a shielded, it's a shielded communications bus and it just isn't gonna work right without being grounded. There may be other ways to do this, but this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna loop it and then screw it. All right, and it's still coming off. So we'll see if we can fix this. All right, that's good enough. Not perfect, but it needs to just make electrical contact. I need smaller uh, screwdriver to do this, so let me go get that. All right, so this is S1 and S2, so we're gonna do that as white and black. So I take these all the way out until they cl click because they're loose. 
and then I bring it in another little bit of another turn or two. So these can be trimmed down to about here. And then we'll go ahead and strip these. All right, and we're gonna do white as one, and we need to go ahead and twist these. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and secure that under that terminal. All right, and this is done out here, which is just awesome because, like, yeah, it's, I've spent way too much time on this. Oh, what do you mean it's not going to fit? The f You've got to be fucking kidding me. So this is going to be more complicated to put back together than I expected. Not the end of the world, just aggravating. So clearly, whatever connection method this was designed for was not liquid tight connectors. And that's kind of irritating. There really should be a little more space there. All right, so this is all done. Let me back off and show you guys what we're looking at. So I've got my communications and power and liquid tight back to a new switch disconnect. It looks a little funky sitting out from the wall, but it's okay. And uh, that's just a access point for pulling and transitioning to conduit. And then that's the abandoned disconnect. I probably should put a padlock through it, but whatever. And then I've still got to braze this on. Uh, I'm waiting on a line set to come in because I need a little bit of the 5 8 tubing and some more 3 8 and they just don't stock it locally. They want to sell me a 50 foot roll and I don't need a 50 foot roll. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the alert button if you watch this far. Check out the playlist as well. I have an HVAC playlist that talks about this project from start to finish. Thanks for watching.